well as 10 o'clock strikes on this uh, lovely Sunday morning, welcome to all of you to the service and particularly to the family of Melusina Wilson. And uh, it's going to be her baptism today. And uh, I'll ask Bob if he would be prepared to light the uh, Paschal candle, please, here in preparation for what we're going to do later on in the service. But first of all, I'm going to call some bands of marriage. So I published the bands of marriage between Andrew Simon Bird and Emily Francesca Jenkins, both of Christ Church Highbury with St John and St Saviour, and between Luke Pullen and Faye Laura Lucas, of St. Peter and St. Paul, Edenbridge. And both of these are for the third time of asking. If any of you know just cause or impediment why these persons may not be joined together severally in holy matrimony, you are to declare it. Great, thank you. Let's pray for them as we continue on with the service. Lord, we thank you for every person who comes towards the church for their marriage. And we pray for Andrew and Emily and Luke and Faye, that you will bless them, that you will help them with their marriage services, with the guests, with the reception, and everything that goes with it. And may your blessing rest upon them as a family in the years to come. Amen. <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. That's great. So, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. And some words from Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways. Turn back to the Lord who will have mercy. So in a moment of silence, if we can, but it doesn't matter if we can't, uh, we're just going to bring ourselves before God and offer ourselves to him and then, then we can say a confession together. And so we pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now a prayer for uh, Melusina and her family. O oh God, our Creator, we thank you for the wonder of new life and for the mystery of human love. We give thanks for all whose support and skill surround and sustain the beginning of life. As Jesus knew love and nurture from within a human family, so may Melusina grow in strength and wisdom. And as Mary knew the joys and pains of motherhood, give Melusina's parents, Rachel and Andrew, 
your sustaining grace and love, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So, I'm going to ask the parents and the godparents just to stand along there, please, if that's all right. Just, just, just along there, that's fine. Lovely, thank you very much. So some of these promises are for a whole church, some of the promises are for the parents and godparents. But the instructions should come on the screen if you can see it. Faith is the gift of God to his people, and in baptism the Lord is adding to his church those whom he is calling. People of God, will you welcome Melusina and uphold her in her new life in Christ? With the help of God, we will. So this is now parents and godparents. Parents and godparents, the church receives Melusina with joy. Today we're trusting God for her growth in faith. Will you pray for her? Draw her by your example into the community of faith and walk with her in the way of Christ. With the help of God, we go. In baptism, Melusina begins her journey in faith and you're speaking on her behalf today. Will you care for her and help her to take her place within the life and worship of Christ's church? <laughs> okay, so in baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvelous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore I ask, this is parents and godparents, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? I reject them. Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? I renounce them. Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and our neighbor? I repent of them. This is, they're all doing the promises here on behalf of Melusina. If she was old enough, maybe she would make these promises on, on with her own lips. But of course, they're doing it on her behalf. So it's as if she's speaking. Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? I turn to Christ. Do you submit to Christ as Lord? I submit to Christ. Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? I come to Christ. So this is for all of us now. Let us affirm together with Melusina, who is being baptised, our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in Him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in Him. This is the faith of the Church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Great. Now the baptismal party will go to the font. So let's go to the back, please.
so funny, isn't it, having to put masks on and visors and all that sort of stuff, but hey. Well done, Melissina, you did, you did well there. Now, we're going to give a lighted candle, so I'll ask the godparent to just take that candle and light it from here. God has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and has given us a place with the saints in light. Melissa, you have received the light of Christ. Walk in this light all the days of your life. We give you this light to show that you have passed from darkness to light. We say together, shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. There is one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Melusina, by one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. We say together, we welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same heavenly Father. We welcome you. She's really taken part. It's great. Thank you. So I think we can welcome her. You may sit down now, thank you. Now, for those of you who don't know, Melusina looks surprisingly like our organist. <laughs> so, just a couple of generations removed, of course, but um, she's his granddaughter, which is lovely. So, welcome, her. thank you. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the uh, liturgical part of our service called the Word. And we're going to have the Old Testament read to us now by Chris. The Old Testament reading is Psalm 25 verse 1 to the end. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. In you I trust, O my God. Do not let me be put to shame, nor let my enemies triumph over me. No one whose hope is in you will ever be put to shame, but they will be put to shame who are treacherous without excuse. Show me your ways, O Lord, Teach me your paths, guide me in your truth, and teach me. For you are God my Saviour, and my hope is in you all day long. Remember, O Lord, your great mercy and love, for they are from old. Remember not the sins of my youth and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you are good. O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore he instructs sinners in his ways. He guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his way. All the ways of the Lord are loving and faithful, but those who keep the demands of his for those who keep the demands of his covenant. For the sake of your name, O Lord, Forgive my iniquity, though it is great. Who then is the man that fears the Lord? He will instruct him in the way chosen for him. He will spend his days in prosperity, and his descendants will inherit the land. The Lord confides in those who fear him. He makes his covenant known to them. My eyes are ever on the Lord, for only he will release my feet from the snare. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. The troubles of my heart have multiplied. Free me from my anguish. Look upon my affliction and my distress and take away all my sins. 
See how my enemies have increased and how fiercely they hate me. Guard my life and rescue me. Let me not be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness protect me, because my hope is in you. Redeem Israel, O God, from all their troubles. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now Carol will read the New Testament reading. Testament reading is taken from Matthew chapter 18 beginning at verse 25 21 then Peter came to Jesus and asked Lord how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me up to seven times Jesus answered I tell you not seven times but 77 times therefore the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants as he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay the master, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to pay the debt. At this the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him cancelled the debt and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell on his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant, just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my Heavenly Father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother and sister from your heart. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thank be to God. God. Well, on Tuesday, a YouGov poll asked a question. How much sympathy do you have, if any at all, for the migrants who've been crossing the channel from France to England? The first answer from those who said they did have a fair amount of sympathy, or a great deal of sympathy, 44%. people who had not much sympathy and no sympathy at all turned out at 49%. Now, I acknowledge that immigration is a very complicated issue. And uh, some people sitting here have quite a lot to do with immigrants. But Jesus challenges our attitude with the fifth beatitude from Matthew 5. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. That's why I chose the reading that Carol read to us. Now, like righteousness, mercy can get a bad press. Mercy, like meekness, is seen as weak and insipid. You know, sort of, oh, there, there, everything will be all right. But mercy in the Bible is a strong and energetic commitment to seeing that right is done 
so that all may share in the experience of the grace of God. We introduced our service, I don't know if you noticed it, by saying, Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And you said, and also with you, at the beginning of the service, mercy. Someone said that grace is giving us what we do not deserve. And mercy is not giving us what we do deserve. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. And these words that Jesus was using, mercy, about merciful and mercy, uh, are from the Greek word which gives us our English word, alms. The sort of money that you give to the poor. And that particular uh, meaning of the word comes out in Matthew a little bit in the next chapter. When you give to the needy or when you give alms, don't sound a trumpet in the streets, Jesus said. But in the Old Testament, mercy is translated by two main Hebrew words which were read to us in Psalm 25 that Chris read to us. Verse 6 said, Remember, Lord, your great mercy and steadfast love, because they are from of old. And it was a cry from the psalmist, who in this case was King David, saying to God, Please, would you act on my behalf according to your true character, which is mercy and steadfast love. That's the character of God. And the word for mercy comes from the Hebrew word for the womb, or the most internal part of us. And uh, the plural of the word means bowels. So, bowels of compassion. And steadfast love is a lovely word in Hebrew, chesed, which means the covenant love. It's the sort of love that says, I'm going to stick with you through thick and thin. And it's variously translated goodness, kindness, the loving kindness, the faithfulness that comes from being in a relationship with somebody. So mercy means the emotional side of love from a gut level. And steadfast love expresses the relationship aspect of mercy and love. The Greeks regarded the bowels as the seat of violent passion, such as anger and love. The Jews regarded the bowels, sorry to talk about all this, you didn't think you were coming to the church for this, <laughs> you, this morning. Anyway, the, but the Jews regarded the bowels as the centre of the more tender affections, especially kindness and pity. So you could say for the Jews, bowels. We, we would translate coming from the heart. But they would say coming from the guts. And when Jesus was confronted by people in need, he had compassion on them. In fact, the Gospels say in several places that Jesus was moved with compassion, moved in his guts to have pity on them. We might say his heart went out to these people, or they broke his heart. Now, the unmerciful servant in the parable that Carol read to us did not have compassion for his fellow servant. He didn't feel with him. He didn't feel his pain. He didn't regard him really as a human being with worth and dignity. He just saw him as a means to an end, to get money. And he was certainly not in a close relationship with him. And I think it's when we get close to people, we allow ourselves to get close to people, that we're likely to open our hearts to what they need. In the parable, the master summoned the unmerciful, not compassionate servant and said to him, You wicked servant, I gave you, forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. And should not you have had mercy on your fellow servant? Just as I had mercy on you? Answer, yes. I think, you know, when we've had an experience or the experience 
of God having mercy on us with all our faults and failures, we're more likely to feel compassion feeling with others and more likely, therefore, to have mercy on them. I think that this quality of mercy is to be found in those who work for the non-governmental -govern organisations who get alongside others to work with them to get what they need, to do what needs to be done. And I also think that this quality of mercy can be seen in the frontline workers that have kept us going through this COVID crisis, keeping our society functioning despite all the risks to themselves. And of course, this quality of mercy was seen in Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And she said this, by blood and origin, I am all Albanian. My citizenship is Indian. I am a Catholic nun. But as to my calling, I belong to the whole world. As to my heart, or she could have said her guts, I belong entirely to the heart of Jesus. That's what motivated Mother Teresa of Calcutta in her work. And of course, Jesus' heart was a heart of compassion towards those who were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. It was a heart of mercy. And I hope that this quality of mercy will be demonstrated in you and in me. And to finish with, I'm going to read you a short poem by William Blake from The Divine Image. Here's the poem. To mercy, pity, peace and love, all pray in their distress. And to these virtues of delight, return their thankfulness. For mercy, pity, peace and love is God, our Father dear. And mercy, pity, peace and love is man, his child and care. For mercy has a human heart, pity a human face, and love the human form divine, and peace the human dress. Then every man of every clime that prays in his distress Praise to the human form divine, love, mercy, pity, peace. And all must love the human form in heathen, Turk or Jew, where mercy, love and pity dwell, their God is dwelling too. Let us pray. O oh God, you declare your almighty power most chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Mercifully grant to us such a measure of your grace that we, running the way of your commandments, may receive your gracious promises and be made partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. That's the collect for the ninth Sunday after Trinity. Now I'm going to ask Isabel to lead us in our prayers. Let's pray together. <laughs> Dear God, as we have sweltered in the heat this week, waiting for the rain and cooler nights to come, we are so grateful that we live in England, and not in places like Yemen, Sudan and Mexico, and other places that are so hot and dry. We thank you for all your goodness and generosity to us, for the fine weather for harvesting, for the coast and hills for holidays, for our homes our families and friends, and for all the good things that we've enjoyed over this past week. We have so much to be thankful for. Please help us to be grateful people.
We continue to pray for Lebanon as the country tries to find a good and just sol solution to its new ways of government. We pray especially for the city of Beirut. We thank you for all the amazing examples of people working hard to help each other to make their homes safe until they can be repaired. For providing food and, and safety for those who were without food and shelter for those who've been made homeless through the terrible explosion. We pray that if there are any individuals who are without help and support, they may be found by others who will come and help them. And we pray that you would give wisdom to all the people who are working together to provide aid for the country and support the people in finding a good way forward. In our own country, we pray for all students who either got their A-level results last week or waiting for their GCS results this Thursday. That you would help them to know what action to take, to know which apprenticeship, college course or university degree to accept, or how to go about getting a fair judgment of their abilities through the appeals procedure. Dear God, this has been such a tough summer for our young people, and we pray that you will watch over them and help them to find the best place for them to develop and thrive. And we especially pray for any who are struggling with their mental health. Please help doctors, counsellors and psychiatrists to know how best to help each individual. We pray for children throughout the Chilling Stones and the wider local area. Thank you for the gift of children who enrich our lives so much. Help us to listen to them through the multiple ways that they communicate with us. Help us to see the world through their eyes, to understand their feelings, to welcome their suggestions and ideas, and to nurture them holistically. We thank you for Andrew and Rachel, for their two daughters, Athena and Melissa, and for their families. We pray that you would bless Melissa, watching over her as she grows and develops. Please give her parents, and her godparents, Cara and Adam, wisdom in nurturing her, and help her wider family in their support of them all. We pray that both girls will always know that you love them and want the best for them. And Lord, you want that for all of us too. And we bring to you the people who we love. We name those who are unwell, those who are grieving. And thank you for the memories of those who are no longer with us, as we remember them in name in this silence. Accept our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now the uh, collect for this Sunday, the tenth Sunday after Trinity. Lord of heaven and earth, as Jesus taught his disciples to be persistent in prayer, give us patience and courage never to lose hope, but always to bring our prayers before you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So the Lord's Prayer, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Now, thank you very much for coming to share with us this morning. And um, as you go out, I would like you to wait in your pew until the church wardens usher you out, if you don't mind. And also on your way out, could you please give your hands a little uh, cleanse with the uh, whatever, it, whatever it is, which is outside. Is that right, Chris? Yeah. And if you want to uh, contribute any, any, any to the collection, anything to the collection, there's a little box on your way out. Anyway, have a lovely Sunday, you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.